Salutations, my fellow wanderers. This is Kato. In this guide, I will be showing you the locations of all the weapon schematics in the DC Wasteland, and also what these weapons do with the assistance of the Fallout Wiki. Collecting more than one of the same schematic will allow you to either create weapons of higher quality or more of them if there are explosives. Our adventure begins with the Rocket Launcher. It is one of the two craftable weapons that has four schematics instead of three. Being able to fire anything from the miscellaneous category is what makes this gun so useful. Disappointingly, whatever you load into it will all do the same damage. A Lawn Gnome will do the same damage as a Deathclaw Hand, which will do the same damage as a Teddy Bear. Thankfully, this gun's base damage is sizable. The first rocket launcher schematic can be found in Megaton in Crater Side Supply. And not only does Moira have the schematics, but she also has the things you need to make it. So if you have the caps and the skill, this is a good early weapon. The second schematic can be found in Vault 101. To retrieve it, you may have to wait until the Trouble on the Homefront quest, as you need a lockpick skill of 50 to get it. This is likely the reason there are four schematics instead of three, because one cannot be obtained after a certain point. The third schematic can be bought from Crazy Wolfgang, the caravaner who likes to sell his junk and make puns about his junk. Best place to find him is in Canterbury Commons. If he is not there, wait an hour at a time and his caravan is sure to come through, unless he was killed which is entirely possible. Best to get this sooner rather than later. Schematic number four can be found in Rivet City, in the Armory. The door to the Armory is locked, so you must pick it or find the key. You can pickpocket the key from Harkness or Commander Danvers. Behind the door is a hostile turret. If it notices you, everyone nearby will become your enemy until you leave and come back. What a fun challenge, huh? Using this junk cannon adds entertainment value, as seemingly useless junk can now travel at bone crunching velocity. There is a couple of downsides, one being this gun is in no way accurate, the other being it might break vats entirely not doing damage at all. But it's still fun. Next schematic on the list, and one of my personal favorites, the Bottle Cap Mine. This is the other craftable that has four schematics instead of three, and its damage alone makes seeking out those hard to find cherry bombs worth it. If at any time you are overwhelmed by a cluster of enemies, or an ill-tempered deathclaw, bottle cap mines make swift work of both. We go once again to Megaton for the first schematic. It is given to you as a quest reward from Moira Brown while you are helping her with research. She sends you off to learn how to navigate a minefield, and if you bring her back a frag mine, she will hand you the schematic with a smile. The second bottle cap mine schematic is in Herbert Dashwood's safe in Tenpenny Tower. Speak to him for a time, and he will mention Argyle. Dashwood gives you the schematics after you find out what became of Argyle, or you could just steal them from the safe. Hint, hint. Unmarked location west of Smith Casey's garage. Third schematic you will find at Jocko's Pop and Gas Stop. This is a remote service station that is a lengthy walk to the northwest from Tenpenny Tower, or a short jaunt east from Girdershade. Be sure to grab the couple other loot-worthy things in there too. The last bottle cap mine schematic is found in Little Lamplight. It is being sold by Knickknack at the souvenir shop. The only real challenge of getting this schematic is actually getting into Little Lamplight, but if you follow the main storyline, it should be no problem whatsoever. This might blow you away. At its base damage, a bottle cap mine does five times the damage of a frag mine. It'll jump from 500 to 800 if you get all three ranks of the Demolition Expert perk. These work great for small spaces and doorways, and can also be dropped on an unexpected enemy. Next in our search is the schematics for the Railway Rifle. With Railway Spikes as its ammunition, this gun seems to have a personal vendetta against limbs, as its damage against limbs is multiplied by three as a special effect. It may have difficulties firing at long range, but at mid-range or closer, you will find yourself removing the enemy's limbs with extreme prejudice. Finding the first schematic is as easy as going to Rivet City. Or is it? When Abraham Washington sends you on the quest to get the Declaration of Independence at the National Archives in the mall, he pays you caps and gives you a schematic as a reward. Not far from the National Archives is the Museum of History, and Underworld is within. It is here and in Underworld Outfitters that you can purchase a schematic from Tulip. She can also give you a one-of-a-kind skill book if you ask nicely. Schematic number three for the Railway Rifle is in the MDPL 13 Power Station substation. This is the smaller building of the two. There's little to no resistance. If any, there might be one to two enemies outside. Most are in the other building though. On to extra details about the Railway Rifle. After using this rifle for a little while, you'll notice that killing an enemy with a critical hit to either the head, the arms, or the legs could cause it to be ripped from the body and pinned to the nearest wall. The next set to be found are the schematics for the shish kebab. With a scavenged fuel tank, a lawnmower blade, and a pilot light, you can make yourself something that looks like a sword that's on fire. Its damage and damage over time is affected by the pyromaniac perk. If you have the means, it is a worthwhile melee weapon. Watch for gas leaks though. The first of these three schematics can be stolen from or given to you by Vance in Moresti Station. To have it given to you, you must complete the Blood Ties quest completely, and in the favor of Vance or both parties. The second schematic can be bought from Lucky Harith, a traveling gun salesman, and like Crazy Wolfgang, frequents Canterbury Commons. 
so it is best to find him there. It is a good excuse to stock up on ammunition as well. Just to the west of SATCOM Array NN03D, in a small outcast encampment you will find the third schematic for the shish kebab, completing the collection of shish kebab schematics. A couple extra details on the shish kebab, humanoid companions can equip and use it, unlike many of the other craftables. Also, even though this weapon could clearly be seen in the dark, it does not seem to affect your ability to sneak up on an enemy at all, so you can slice and cauterize from the shadows. The next for us to collect is the Deathclaw Gauntlet schematics, a great way for shredding armored opposition, as the gauntlet it ignores any armor your enemy may have, and has an outrageous critical chance multiplier by 5. Even though this appears to be a melee weapon in the inventory screen, that is false. It is considered an unarmed weapon. So Iron Fist and the Paralyzing Palm perks can and will affect it in the best way possible. Our search for the first schematic leads us to the Rivet City Marketplace, speaking to Bannon of Potomac Attire, and helping him ruin Seagrave Holmes chances of being a council member will reward you with the schematic. Schematic number two can be found in the F. Scott Key Trail and Campground. God, is mouthful. It is in viewing distance of the Dunwich Building, just slightly to the west. Be careful as enemies may appear after you loot the schematic. The third set of plans is found at random. Yes, you heard right. In this encounter, you will find a wounded Deathclaw and a dead Wastelander, and you can loot the schematic from his body. The Deathclaw will be crippled and easy to take down. I found this one at the water tower next to Minefield. The damage of this gauntlet surpasses that of the Power Fist. Its AP cost is high, so chances of Paralyzing Palm would be better for a different weapon. If you find a way to bring your luck up to 10 and get the Ninja Perk, this will always score a critical hit. Get decent armor and you'll be unstoppable. The second to last schematics we are searching for are for the Dart Gun. Equally odd looking as the Rocket Launcher, but useful in a variety of situations. Combined with having 100% accuracy, 8 damage per second over 8 seconds, being able to cripple both legs instantly, and being silent, it's good for turning the tide. The first place you can purchase this schematic is in Tenpenny Tower at Boutique Le Chic. It doesn't matter if you have assisted the ghouls or not, as Lydia Montenegro and Michael Masters both have the same inventory. Don't worry about having enough caps, because this can be bought at any time. The second schematic can be given to you by Hannibal Hamlin at the Temple of the Union through the quest Head of State. This will only be given if you side with Hannibal, help them in the process of relocating, and speak to him after they reach the Lincoln Memorial. The last schematic for the dart gun can be found in the MDPL-05 power station. It is just southeast of Raven Rock. The area is surrounded by a fence with two locked gates, but there is also a hole in the fence, making it easily accessible. For use in combat, the dart gun is especially effective against enemies that like close quarters, including super mutants that like their sledgehammers, Yao Guai, Death Claws, and Feral Ghouls. Having 8 poison damage per second proves especially useful against weaker enemies. The final schematics in our search ends with the Nuka Grenade schematics. This is by far the most powerful grenade that can be found in the game, and the only grenade that does damage over time. A couple of materials for this explosive might be difficult to find, so it may be best to get all three schematics before you decide to make some, because with all three, one set of components will give you three grenades. The first schematic brings us to Cliffside Cavern, east of Tenpenny Tower. Inside you will encounter raiders and eventually Yao Guai. When you start encountering nothing but Yao Guai, you are in the right place. You will find it near numerous skeletal remains. The second schematic is received from Sierra Petrovita after completing the Nuka Cola challenge. In this quest she asks you to bring her 30 quantums, which seems like a lot but if you get all three schematics, it'll only take 10 quantums to make 30 grenades, so it's not really all that bad. The last Nuka Grenade schematic can be bought from Doc Hoff, and like the other caravanners, can be found in Canterbury Commons. From what you now know and have caps to spare, three of the four caravans sell schematics. Exploding into a ball of blue flame is a signature of these grenades. The downside is that it's not affected by the Pyromaniac or Demolition Expert perks. Not really necessary though, having a damage of 500 already is more than enough to wreak some havoc. And there you have it, all of the schematics of the DC Wasteland. If you want some locations for components, I've listed a few in the description. If you like this video and or found it useful, leave a comment, I love hearing from you. This is Kato, aka Marcus, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.